Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. Uh, it is Thursday um, on this wonderful, beautiful end of September, uh, and it is time for our daily devotions. Uh, sorry, I'm a few minutes late, but um, been online for a, a leadership institute. Um, it's their annual one. It's uh, kind of my continuing education that I do each year. Uh, I, along with a couple of other of our folks, have been online with it today. And so uh, we're on our lunch break, and I wanted to do our devotion with with you. So this is the time that we're going to be together. Um, and so we'll wait for a few minutes uh, for folks to be able to sign in. I'm going to go grab a quick sandwich after that. And then I've got to be back at 1245 for uh, our next session. So uh, we're going to have the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church, um, Michael Curry, speaking to us about race and, race and justice. So it's going to be interesting. Hi, Linda. Uh, yeah, I will eat lunch. <laughs> it'll be a peanut butter sandwich, and it'll be quick. Hi, Jack. Hi, Pat. Glad you're with us. I hope you're eating lunch, too, Belinda, because uh, you and I both have to be back at the same time. <laughs> Hi, Jenny. Good afternoon to you. We'll wait a few moments, uh, make sure folks get a chance to sign in that want to be here with us today. Leave us a comment. Let us know you're here. Would love to say hello. Hi, Barbara. Glad to have you with us today. We're going to be reading from Acts chapter 2, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 17 to 21 is what we're going to read today. Hi, Marcella. Glad to have you with us today. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, this is a little bit faster than what's normal, but glad that we're all get a chance to do this. Hi, Paula. So we're reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, beginning in the 17th verse. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness and the moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Our author today is uh, Osten Bridge from Oslo, Norway. And um, his focus first is seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. That's Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And here is what he writes for us today. Many years ago, our family went on a holiday trip to continental Europe. One day, we went on a sightseeing trip on the famous Koenig Sea near Berchtesgaden in Bavaria, Germany. Koenig Sea is a deep lake surrounded by high mountains that create an enormous echo. The guide on the electric ferry was also a good trumpet player. So as we reached mid-sea, the ferry stopped and he played a short song. Seconds after he finished, the music was thrown several times back and forth among the mountains. This experience has made me think about how the wonder of God can be like an echo in our hearts and thoughts, not just for seconds, but through many years. Today's quote, uh, today's quoted verse is one of my favorites. Another verse that has come, become an anchor for me is Acts 2.21. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. These verses and many others have brought me hope for this life and the next. So my prayer is that I will allow these verses to speak through me 
so that they may echo in the lives of those that I meet. The thought for the day is God's word can live in me and flow through me to others. Um, as I was reading this devotion, I was taken back to my days in Germany. Uh, I lived in what was called the Kaiserslautern Vogelway area. I was really near there, uh, real close to Lahnstuhl and um, Ramstein Air Force Base and, and uh, that area. Large concentration of American military there, but uh, had a chance to also travel to Berchtesgaden in the Bavarian area of Germany. Um, I have been to what was called Hitler's Tea House, which is in the Alps, and from Hitler's Tea House, you can look out over the Koenig Sea. Uh, I've been to uh, also Neuschwanstein and you know, all, the, all the wonderful sites that you can see, been up and down the Rhine and the Mosul on ferries during the Rhine of Flammen uh, in July when they set the, the uh, Rhine of Flame in the castles that are still there and have fireworks displays. It's just, it's a wonderful thing to go see. And, and, and he's right, you, you know, in the Alps, you know, sound reverberates. Uh, it's fascinating to be able to experience something like that and, and to see it happen in, in, um, in person. And uh, I, I think about, um, you know, his, his use of that analogy um, as a story of how faith can reverberate in our lives and in our world. Um, what is it that we hold dear? What is it we cherish? What is it that we want to pass on? It may not necessarily be um, a, a strict storyline of the gospel. Uh, it may be some things that, that life has taught you as lessons that you want your family and your, um, your children, your grandchildren, uh, nieces, nephews, whatever. You want them to kind of pick up on some of these things. Be true. Uh, be someone of character. Uh, be someone who is uh, trustworthy. Be someone, you know, be someone who uh, is a hard worker. You know, all these kinds of things kind of become storylines that we want to pass on to those around, and we want them to reverberate. And so we try to emulate these things through our own lives. We try to do these things. You know, at the church, we want people to be generous, so the church tries to be generous in its nature, particularly as we focus on uh, external things outside of the church. When we think about what it means for us to support harvesters or neighbor to neighbor or baby grace or any of the other ministries that we're involved in with the poor, you know, the church wants to be generous and we want people to be generous. So the church has to be generous for the people to be. We want these things to reverberate in a way in which they become the goodness that we share in the world around us. There is too much, my friends, that reverberates in our world that shares the distortions and shares, you know, the, the negativity of, of all that's happening around us. You know, uh, Facebook and Twitter and those kinds of platforms um, aren't necessarily at the moment reflecting and reverberating the goodness of what's happening in the world around us. It seems like it's more dominated, you know, in our personal profiles and things like that by, you know, the negativity. And that's what reverberates, you know, the constant criticism of one another um, and people that we do not know and, and leaders and all those kinds of things. We, we've just given over to it. So as a Christian community, if we want to breed hope in the world, if we want that to reverberate, then we've got to share something different. And I think part of it is, is that we've got to share the good news and the message that, yes, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to us. Seek it first, and so maybe that will be the thing that reverberates from your life so that people that you know might come to call upon the name of the Lord. And in that, Find the goodness of God's heart and love and forgiveness and salvation. So think about that today with me. I, I hope that challenges each one of us. What, what is reverberating from our lives? Is it just more a reflection of the negativity of the world around us? Or is it a reflection, maybe a dominant reflection, 
of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ and the love of God. Let's take a moment to pause and pray. So merciful God in heaven, thank you for your word that tells us about your limitless love. Help us to let your love live in our hearts and reverberate in the world around us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I like the use of those words, limitless love, because that's what I'm going to be preaching on on Sunday. I hope that you'll be joining us online uh, for worship. Uh, we'll be having our devotion time tomorrow as well. I'm going to get an opportunity to get out and play a little bit of golf, so I might be online just a little bit later than normal, but uh, we will be having our devotion time tomorrow on Saturday, so I look forward to spending that time with you. Come and join me. Um, and as we conclude, if you want to take a moment to post this on your own timeline, that would be awesome. That way, uh, so maybe some of your friends can join in our devotion time. I, I am blessed by each one of you who are here. Thank you so much for joining today. I hope that God's rich blessings continue to be upon you and that you have a blessed rest of your beautiful Thursday. I've been sitting out on my front porch, um, and it is a beautiful day outside. And so I hope you enjoy the rest of this beautiful day as well. God's peace and grace be upon you, and thanks for being here, friends.